Hello guys, welcome back to Unity Gurus. My name is Mahin and this time I have brought you an exciting tutorial because in this video there is no coding, no C sharp, nothing else. In this video we will have a look at Unity's new node based visual effect graph. We will make a cool particle effect like this using new VFX graph tool. We will also learn how to use our 3D and 2D asset in this new VFX particle system using point cache bake tool. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, as you can see, I have opened up Unity's new visual effect demo project, which you can download from Unity's website or from the link given in the description below. In this sample project, Unity have added three main demo scene. First one is butterfly animation. Second one is morphing face using a point cache file. And the last one is this Unity logo file. I'm using this Unity logo scene for this introduction video. First, I make a copy of the scene by saving as demo VFX. And next delete all these three game objects. Now our scene has this main camera which has applied this post processing effect. In the scene setting it has a volume component which has edgy shadows, visual environment and gradient sky for this nice smooth background which you can also edit from here. Before starting let me tell you that currently this VFX graph only works in Unity's high definition render pipeline. So to use this tool, you must have installed HD render pipeline, which you can install by going package manager and install this high definition RP. You also need to install this visual effect graph package if you are starting from a fresh Unity project. If you don't see this visual effect graph here, you can go advanced and click on this show preview package. This will show packages which are still in development. All right, after importing VFX and HDRP package, I make a new folder called demo asset to store all the assets which we'll be using throughout this video. First of all, right click in this asset folder and go to create visual effect and create visual effect graph. I call it simple VFX. Next to see this VFX asset, simply drag and drop in the scene hierarchy or you can make a visual effect game object from here and drag this asset in the template section. Both way works fine. Next, to edit this effect, simply double click on it and this will open your effect in visual effect graph editor. As you can see, editor has a very simple UI. Let's quickly go through the menus. First one is refreshed, just to refresh our editor. This select asset, as the name says, will select our asset in the asset folder. This blackboard is same like shader graph editor, which is used to expose some parameters. The target game object is used to link our effect to a VFX game object. Just simply select your game object and click attach and this will attach our effect to this game object. Auto compile is self explanatory which automatically compile your effect whenever you make any changes. And the last compile option is used to manually compile the effect which is very useful whenever this auto compile doesn't work. Basically this is a node based editor where you can connect some nodes and make your final effect. So these outer boxes are called context and inside the context these gray boxes are blocks and the box you make outside the context are called nodes. So the whole system is made of context, blocks and nodes. Very simple, isn't it? Let me give you a basic idea about this context. This first spawn context, you can think of it like an awake function in our mono behavior scripts, which is called at the beginning of every script. This initialize is similar to void start. This voice update is similar to void update in our mono behavior script. And the last output context is similar to Unity's old GUI function if you ever used it for drawing buttons and text element on the screen. Let's also compare this new VFX tool with Unity's old particle system so that you can understand it much better. Let's quickly make a new particle system by going effect and particle system. And as you can see, both are looking very similar except the texture. Let's compare them block by block. This first spawn block is same like this emission panel where you can set the rate and type of particles, like this bust option in both system. This initialize block is similar to this area where you can set parameter like start speed, start size, rotation and other parameters. For example, this capacity is same like this maximum particle count. If you are thinking that this initialize context has very few options, then don't worry, you can add so many other parameters by just right click and create block. You will find some many attributes like position and velocity to modify your effect. Next, the update context is related to these parameters. Not all of them, but you can find many parameters in this update context like velocity, force, collision, and some GPU events to spawn new particle system from the main particles. 
and finally our last output context is similar to this render parameters where you can set material color light texture and shape of our particles like this render modes billboard stretch billboard mesh which you can also find in this blend mode and uv modes all right that's enough with the comparison let's start playing with our vfx graph first delete all the blocks and hit ctrl s to remove all the particles you can also hit ctrl z to get all the blocks back to make a new particle system simply right click create node system and choose simple particle system this will give you a default particle system to start with in the system menu, Unity has also provided a VFX template called Simple Swan Particle System, which is really very cool. You can check out this various block to see their impact in this effect. Of course, you can go crazy if you want. Alright, so let's start making our effect. First, I right click, go to Create Node, System and select Simple Particle System to make our base effect. In the spawn context, I set the constant spawn rate to 1000, which means 1000 particles per second. Next, in the set lifetime random block, I set minimum 1 and maximum 10 seconds. Next, in the capacity block, since we are generating 1000 particles for a maximum 10 seconds, so basically it can have maximum 10,000 particles at a time. Again, this is just a basic calculation. You can increase or decrease this amount to get the right number for your effect. I don't want to use this set velocity random block, so simply select it and hit delete to remove this block. To add a new block, right click and select create block and in the search box type position and choose position spare. This will place all the particles in a spherical shape. Next in the update, again right click to add a new block and search force and select force to give a basic directional force to our particles. Next in the quad output context, change the main texture to either the default particle and it will look like this. But I am choosing this star particle texture which I have already imported. Now as you can see our particle have become dark because our texture doesn't have any alpha in it. To fix this issue simply change the blend mode to additive. Now these are looking fine. Next in the color alpha over time section you can edit the color of particles. From left to right you can set the color of particles from birth to death. I want this particle yellow in the beginning and red in the end so that I can get a nice yellow to red transition in the particles color. After adjusting the color and texture, our particles are looking much better. Next, once again, go to update context and set the mode to relative. Right click outside the context and select create node and search time. And select this periodic total time and in the values set period to 2 and set the range from negative 3 to 3. So this is basically a node which continuously looping the value from negative 3 to 3 in 2 seconds and simply connect the output of this node to x velocity and this drag parameter. So this will create a pose in the x force and drag which is looking like our sphere is emitting another sphere from it. Also feel free to play with this node by hooking them in other values to get a completely different effect. Next to change the shape of particle from a sphere to a custom 3D object again in the initialize context right click create block and choose this set position from map. Right now it's using a noise texture to use our own 3D objects, right click, create node and search point cache. In this node you can choose a point cache file of your 3D object. Right now I am using this mask face file which is used in this demo project. So select the file and connect the position to attribute map. And voila, now our particles are placed in this mask face. Let me quickly rotate our camera. Currently there are not enough particle in this shape so let's add one more zero to both our rate and capacity. And now we have enough particles. One thing I would really like to tell you that right now it's emitting 10,000 particles per second and still my viewport is moving very smooth. It may look slow in the video because I am recording also but trust me it is super optimized. Next thing is how do we make point cache file from a 3D object. But don't worry Unity has also provided a tool for that. To use this tool, go to Windows, Visual Effect, Utilities and select Point Cache Bake Tool. This tool is very straightforward. Just select your mesh from here. I am choosing this everybody's favorite teapot mesh which I have magically imported in this scene. And save this point cache file in demo asset folder as teapot underscore 01. Now you can select your teapot point cache file from here. Voila! You can also increase the size of this mesh from here.
This is so satisfying to see a teapot made of shiny particles. So that's it. That's how you can make a particle effect using your custom 3D object. But wait, let me tell you one more super cool thing about this point cache tool is that you can not only convert your 3D object, but also your textures to a point cache file. I have again magically imported this Unity Guru's logo. Before converting a texture to a point cache file, make sure that you have enabled this read write option on textures. Rest of the process is same, just select your texture and save your file in your asset folder. So that's how you can also use your textures in this particle system. Right now this VFX graph only supports three types of data file, point cache, vector fields and sign distance fields. But I guess they will also add support for other file formats like FBX, PNG, etc. in future updates. Now comes the fun part. Let's test our particle with rate of 100,000 and capacity set to 10 million. And trust me guys, this is still very smooth and running very fast like no one can beat this. So that's enough for this video. I'll see you in the next video, maybe with some other VFX examples. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. You can download the source file from the description and please hit the subscribe button for more updates. Goodbye and wish you a very happy Christmas.